Hello everyone and welcome back for another episode of Minecraft Bedrock Survival. We are finally back uh, after uh, typically one catastrophe after another. Uh, we'd lost uh, 12 episodes worth of recordings and uh, then the hard drive in my uh, computer that I use uh, died. So I had to, I had to uh, wait for that one to get uh, get repaired. But one thing I will do though is uh, give a shout out to uh, Data Busters Data Recovery in Glasgow. Uh, if you have a broken hard drive or USB or anything like that, uh, take it to this fella because he is is really good and uh, well we wouldn't be uh, getting ready getting back to recording today if, if it wasn't for him so I'll leave a link actually to his uh, website in the description below so if you have any data recovery needs I would highly recommend that you go and check him out but uh, anyway as we're back uh, today we are going to be having a look finally at some uh, redstone clocks um, but one thing I thought I'd, I'd just start down here because uh, I've been meaning to show you everyone this for a while I don't know what it's like in other worlds but does everyone else have a animal spawning chunk um, two years now in this world and all of the animals continuously spawn only in that chunk down there anyway let's uh, hop over here to our redstone testing warehouse and um, we're going to start going through uh, all the different sort of clock designs uh, because I've had to make a slight upgrade to our storage system because there was quite a lot of problems uh, occurring in it and um, I had to basically change the regulator that regulates the number of items that flow into the storage system at any one time uh, and to do that we've put a, an alternative um, uh, redstone clock design in but uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to have a look through multiple redstone clock designs and we're going to start off here with the ones that I recommend that you do not use uh, I mean these are all well and good they're uh, very very cheap to make but they are not reliable for any uh, any sort of like seriously big build or anything like that um, so we'll start off here with the basics well actually I should say first of all um, in order to allow for like it be able to view everything smoothly uh, rather than putting in um, redstone lights for the output or anything like that I have put comparators so we'll be able to see from the flashing comparators here that will show us the output from the system so everywhere where you see those unless illustrated otherwise um, the comparator is illustrating an output so let's have a look here this is just your, your basic little nice smooth clock here um, you can see here it's just a very easy to build you've just got a little bit of redstone some torches and as the various blocks gets powered and unpowered it um, just passes the signal around in a nice little loop and that continuously gives you an output um, going out of here so it's nice and steady nice and smooth if you're just making a quick build uh, yes you can use this but there are other things as well that you can use that well, once we get inside will be the better methods even for short builds then moving on we have these sort of arrays where we have a, um, a set of repeaters and they are basically in a loop so what I'll do is we'll just turn that off there and I'll show you how to turn these on. Uh, now I have used these in multiple times in our base but uh, well actually there's none of these I don't think actually left now because I've replaced them all uh, with uh, observer clocks uh, for the most part anyway observer and hopper clocks. Uh, but these ones here, as I said, again, relatively easy. Um, you can adjust the speed a little bit by adjusting the number of ticks. Uh, they can be a bit problematic to turn on though. Uh, you have to be really, really quick. Uh, lots of people do a thing where you put the uh, the redstone torch down. So actually, well, let's just do that there. Uh, yes, I have got a redstone torch. Where you put a redstone torch down and you destroy it quickly. Um, I find that one a little bit more uh problematic i find it's for myself anyway um i personally prefer to turn these on with a uh, a flick of a uh, of a switch it just seems to go a lot faster uh, so then moving on of course then you can make that one even bigger but here in lies the problem with uh, these this is the uh, easy way to illustrate this now you see these are all locked on this is what the problem is with all of these that you see here um all the ones outside here when you have like chunk loading you come in and out of your game maybe you go over like we were over there then we came back or you might go to the never and back uh, or just starting back up in your world uh runs the risk of these lagging a little bit and then locking up uh, i mean I, I i still use one extended version of this uh, for a machine that's a manual machine uh, in our base um but it's uh it, it every time i go away and if i've left it on i come back and this is what i come back to um but that gives you a little bit extra delay if you can get 
Ooh, see that the, the switch even delayed there so you can see there that one works a little bit longer delay and it gives you a little bit more variability uh, this was originally um, the layout that I had for the alarm for our kelp farm uh, but that's been subsequently replaced with a uh, hopper clock which sounds the alarm instead uh, because it kept on locking up and then I wasn't notified that the kelp buffer was full uh, but anyway moving on here we have pretty much the exact same array as what we have there except we've spread it out over a different series of blocks so same again these ones are really easy to turn on we'll just flick that really quickly and you can see there you get a nice steady input when you're around uh, if you have like a lag spike it runs the risk as i said of getting these locked up uh, oh, since that's just rang over there, uh, I attached a bell to the output on this one just so that we could uh, hear it because this sort of one here, we covered this in the bells episode, the um, like day, like day, like day, day and night uh, detectors uh, in quite a little bit of uh, detail with the illustration. Uh, you can use these as a type of clock. It's not 100% accurate when it comes to like midday. Um, but uh, yeah, you can use this to uh, to send a little sort of continuous clocking signal that you don't have to manually manage. Uh, so it does have some use, but uh, it, it almost it's almost random as you're working through the day, even though it is going to be going too particular. Like right now, because we're in a transition to daytime, it's going yeah, it's going mad. But anyway, let's move on to some slightly more complicated looking ones that that really aren't. Uh, so here is another version of a clock, uh, nice and easy to build, we have a uh, repeater in there, redstone torch and a dab of uh, redstone. And the way this works is you have the torch which wants to be powered all the time, so it powers this block up, so this repeater then extracts that signal, pushes it into here which powers this block, which then charges this dab of redstone underneath, which then charges this block, which then unpowers this torch. For a brief moment and that cycle just continues in a nice loop and that just goes on and on there and that's a nice another nice simple design same again i wouldn't use i think this one though is maybe slightly more reliable than those ones uh, i don't see it crashing as much but i suppose you could still have a torch burnout i suppose um so yeah actually yeah we'll, we'll keep this one in the category of not very reliable now what we have here is another really really fast clock but uh same again i wouldn't use this when i did our original um chicken vending machine uh which is right over there uh, this is what i use to put the signal through it uh, I, I don't use that anymore now we use observer uh, clocks um, but what this is basically doing is the uh, the signal comes into the comparator um, and then comes out of the comparator it then gets looped around into its side input and then that causes that to flick on and off uh, we have that invert did it matter if it was invert mode i just remember i wouldn't use this anyway uh, if you want something that fast i would just use an observer uh, because uh, this same again has a tendency to lock up so that it would be continuously on but if i just flick that on there did it make a difference yeah so yeah that the uh, that has to be on invert mode i couldn't remember because i haven't used these for that long because i, I don't recommend this sort anymore um and the same again the output there is too strong for our uh, observer here sorry our, our comparator even here to take a signal of it um let's just uh take that for a second and yeah, that's going to be continuous. So if you want to use that, that has to pretty much be directly uh, linked up to your uh, your output uh, for whatever it is that you're wanting to time. So let's just pop that back on there. And oops, was that crashed? No, just a, a lag spike. There's a lot of lag going on at the minute because of uh, because of all this. Um, but uh, I, I uh, hopefully once we get this episode done, we'll get all this dismantled. Um, anyway, moving on to some of the others. Now, this one here appears to have locked up. Now, is that possibly another example of it lagging out? Right, let's take that off there and. Right, so something I've done has broken this one. Um, right, I don't know quite what I've done to this one, but I appear to have broken it. <laughs> there we go. It's, uh, it's, it's working again. But uh, this illustrates the point, of, again, of why these ones here are not reliable. 
uh, and I wouldn't use any of the ones out here. So I, I might use that one for depending on the scenario. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I would not use these. Uh, but same again, you can see how easy this sort of one is. Uh, you know, you've just got your couple of red sword torches, repeaters, and uh, and that's it. And then just of course you've got your output there. Then moving on, we have a um, looping round mechanism. So we have the the redstone torch powers the line, which then powers that, which unpowers itself, and we have an output here taking out the signal all the time. There, um, same again. It's it's not reliable. Uh, and then of course we had we had a brief look at this here, and of course you can always check out the uh, the episode on the bells, where we uh, we played around with uh, with these, uh, basically this exact same design uh, that we've got here, which we use in our base uh, for uh, telling when it's day and night and time to go to bed. Um, but uh, let's just hop up here, and you can take a closer look at all of these different ones here, and you can see all the different outputs there. In fact, let's uh, whilst we're up here, let's grab a screenshot and you can see here this is the whole point of the redstone testing warehouse you can count how many blocks you can see you can see the nice little striped uh, striped perimeter there showing you everything that we need all nicely measured out but you can see all those little outputs there working so next up though we are going to go inside and we're going to have a look at some better designs um, so first of all we have the traditional EFO clock which is the two hoppers facing each other. This one's a nice variable clock because of course you can put in as much cobblestone as required, well that you can fit in there anyway, uh, and that will bounce back and forth. And as it goes, the uh, it will bounce back and forth there and you can get take an output. Now there are two ways to get an output from this. Uh, mostly I use this one where I have put an observer on and uh, it takes you know it takes a signal uh, every time there you'll see that there's a little flash uh, the other one is just simply from that redstone block take a continuous signal that will come out when the redstone block is over there let's see how far we've we got there's only 32 in these so that shouldn't take too long for that just to flick over there you go and that will give you a continuous signal now you can of course have uh, multiple outputs from this depending on what it is that you're building and what it is you're, you're needing to wear uh, time uh, and what we're going to have a look at in the next episode because whilst i was doing a little bit of research for this episode um i discovered a, a different sort of clock uh, and i've turned it into a counter um, and taking multiple outputs off this uh, is, is part of that but we'll discuss that in the next episode uh, over here we have, of course, this is our pulse extender that we showed. Uh, it's sort of like a clock. Uh, we have some blocks in here and what that does is when it receives a signal, it will give a timed output. So if I just pop that on there, you'll see now there's an output and that will go for as long as there is blocks to drain out of there, which will, when it does, that will cause the system here to reset. So let's have a look there. It's almost ticked down. Wait for it. So there we go and then the output is off and then just in case of by the time that refills then it's ready to go again for accepting an input uh, but that's not really a, a clock like what we're discussing today uh, but it is just a little side illustration I mean you can go and check out it uh, because it's actually a proper working one uh, because the original one which was more compact uh, unfortunately doesn't work in bedrock or Java so this little one that I made uh, does work, uh, work, work properly for a uh, nice pulse extending switch uh, so now let's move on to the sort of clocks that we mainly use and the ones that we use for the regulator for our storage system going back to what we were talking about at the beginning so here we go we have an observer clock now this is really simple you have two observers facing each other and i'll show you how simple this is to build um tell you what we'll grab a piston as well and we'll grab some of them and just to illustrate so all you've got to do for this is you have that little uh, two facing each other so pop that there come around pop that there and that's you uh, that's you basically away and uh, one thing that you can do with this though uh, that we use all over our base is if i pop that there and bring that across we have mechanisms in place which set these timers to go off which is used for item elevators uh, and basically all it does is push them in front of each other you get a signal uh, i probably should have used a lever probably would have been a bit uh, a bit better to illustrate that get rid of that 
and there you go so that's the sort of thing that you can get from that uh, really really useful uh, we, we use this everywhere in our base uh, we actually use these, these first two everywhere but this is a, a primary one for getting a nice quick clock signal uh, and we use this in our item elevators primarily and for all well many of the alarms in the base as well are actually ran by this however our storage system experienced massive problems because of how fast this works. So I needed to put a new regulator in uh, to slow down the pace of things coming into our storage system. And uh, that is where the hoppers come in. Uh, now these hopper clock designs are really easy. Um, they don't require many resources at all. Pretty much all you need is the uh, is the iron uh, and one item to circulate around them. So what we have here, if we click it here, see I have one bit of redstone, and that one bit of redstone, because these two hoppers are facing into each other, um, they bounce that item back and forth, and a signal is taken out at a nice steady pace. And this is a really really reliable system. I mean, using these, I have not had any clocks fail. Uh, using any of these methods, uh, unlike the ones there outside that lockup. Um, the only item that, that, that problem I say that I've had is with this one being too fast, that uh, it's causing uh, filter blocks to drop out of the storage system because there's too much flowing through it at any one time, uh, and that runs into a problem when there's things like chunk loading. Uh, but this method here uh, of getting them out is nice and slow, so that uh, it's still a nice steady pace. But you do have more control over the speed as well, but as long, well, as long as you have the space to build them. So here we have, this is two hoppers with one item flowing between them. Then if we come across here, you'll see if I just move back, we have now four hoppers. And each of these are in a little uh, circular path and it just continuously loops around. And there's one item in there and you'll see twice the length of time that it takes from that one and we get an output. And this is all completely scalable. Here we have three items. Uh, sorry, uh, six blocks even. So we've got a, a three by three uh, patch. And same again, it's just a case of a loop. You know, it doesn't have to be all close together. You could build it right out. Basically, as far as you want to get that signal out that you want. Now, one thing that we've got here is these are, go are very even. So that one is a two, a four, and a six. Uh, what if we wanted something in between? which is exactly what I want for the clock that's going to be featured in the next episode. Um, we needed something that was in between these two. We needed a, a free gap. So how do we get that? Now, <laughs> this looks a little bit complicated. Uh, these comparators here, they are only there for illustration purposes, unless, of course, you wanted to build something that had a signal coming out at a steady pace all the time. Um, and I'll go up here, and what you can see here is we have the six here and there are two items chasing each other and you can see here with the comparators that are put there to illustrate where the items are at any one time so that is continuously looping around all the time the uh, the two little dabs of redstone continuously flow around and you can't see it from this angle but then of course you can see there the output there can go to whatever it is that you need so let's just lock this up for a moment and I'll show you here. So right now you can see there's a dab of redstone there and a dab of redstone there. And a little bit of lag there. <laughs> Let's hop out of there and we'll take those out. And this is really simple to build. All you need is to be able to lock the hoppers. So I'm going to put that there and put... Oop, I can do it without falling down. So you see there, there's one on each of those. Now, if I turn off the power, they'll get drawn in, and that is all you need to do to get one of these little extended clocks to work. Um, now, as I said, I've been, I prepared this episode a month ago, and I've, as much as I haven't been able to record, I've still been playing on this world, just doing a little pottering around. I, I had to get, uh, we were running short of uh, rockets, so I, I uh, grinded for, uh, we now have hundreds and hundreds of rockets. I filled the storage system again with them. Um, and these clocks here, these items have never failed uh, during the whole month. Um, these have never caught up with each other. They've continuously worked in this loop. Um, so if you need a signal which is not as um, slow as this, but just sort of like in the middle, which is what I needed for a uh, design that I'm going to show you next episode, um, th this is uh, another design. So it has extra variability. Of course, you can then expand this out basically as far as you want. Um, the same with all of these. 
Uh, but I'll show you where we've actually embedded this uh, into our storage system. Uh, we'll get some stuff and we'll pop some stuff into storage so I can show you how the regulator uh, works. Um, and actually we can do a little comparison between because we have both of these available. So let's hop over to our base, if I can fly. Let's have some eat whilst we're on the go. Let's fly through the Stargate. And let's hop down here. So let's have a look down here. So we have our big storage system that you've seen loads of times. Uh, one thing I will show you as well while we're here uh, is I have added um, these. There are extra inputs all over the place. So if I'm doing some stuff here and I have some excess stone, I can just chuck it straight into here and it will find its way back into the storage system. And that goes the same over here. Uh, everything on every level all has uh, these extra uh, spaces to be able to store stuff. We just come down here and get it back into the storage system. So we just pop it down here. This is all going to be bricked off eventually, so it's, it's just uh, just whilst we're building. Um, and let's just hop back down here. You'll see that there's the extra outputs there, extra inputs even there. Uh, I'll show you this maybe in another episode as well. Uh, I got rid of our um, bamboo farms on the surface, and I've attached the bamboo farms to the... Um, or what they're called, the, the composters, which are connected to the kelp farm. <laughs> so we can get a continuous stream of uh, of bone meal or anything else that we wish to use um, bone meal for, like the bamboo there. Uh, but anyway, let's hop up here and go into the back of our system. So this is where everything comes in. Anything that comes into our storage system has to come through these hoppers. There, there, there's multiple input paths. So we have an input path here, which comes from the slime farm. Uh, and we have, uh, well, that comes down here. And we have an uh, input here, which comes from the island and from uh, some of the other elements of our storage system. And you'll see here, we have our um, little hopper clock. So inside of here, there was, well, there's just one block that bounces back and forth. And originally, we had an observer clock here, which uh, was really, really fast. It pushed everything up into there to raise it from uh, where we have our input in our main chamber. Uh, and it pushed items into here. But it, as I said, it pushed the items in so fast uh, that I was continuously having problems of the storage system breaking uh, just because there was far too many items in here. And these little filter blocks here, you see as more power came through here because there might have been too many items in there with lag, uh, it would then charge the neighbouring lines, which would then cause the filter blocks to drop out over the neighbours, which then blocked up the storage system, which was uh, no good. And I was continuously having to fish stuff out of the overspill. Um, and uh, it's just become a bit, a bit of a nightmare. But uh, what I'll show you here is, if we go down, uh, you see this here, this is the overspill, or anything that doesn't get sorted uh, lands down here. There's also this here as well, takes things up. Uh, what we have here is the observer uh, method. Um, so if I flick that switch up here, that's very similar to what we illustrated in the base. And you can see there, items get launched up. And that is brilliant for, uh, for getting items up there and uh, ready to go into the storage system. But as I said, it is too fast. Uh, six, so six years well, we have multiple inputs that input there comes from the island this one here comes from uh, all of those little um, well all of these that are up on every level of our storage system but you'll see here as items come in uh, let's just pop a couple of items in here and you'll see items come in there and they get launched up to the storage system at the top there uh, and here we have a, uh, a, 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 a an old style pulse extender which is uh, brilliant for this method here it's nice and quick simple to build and it uh, allows you to load the things up there so let's help hop back up to the base going this way is far easier than using the ladders which we'll is simply fly straight up so let's get back up here and in here and here you can see I do have a, a bit of an oversized extender on here because uh, I was worried that things might get a little bit stuck. Uh, but uh, what I'll do is actually, if we just come down here, I will grab, uh, actually we'll just grab a few stacks of this. That'll be the easiest way to demonstrate it. So um, at the minute, uh, so, uh, well, one you can see there, items got pushed in there really quickly. In fact, so should we load them from down there? Uh, right, we'll, we'll go back down and we'll load a few more items in down there. Ooh. 
Ooh, we almost lost uh, everything again there. Um, let's uh, hop in here. Uh, we'll put two stacks in and they'll get pushed up. Um, oh, where are we going? We'll go this way. The thing is, when I record, I get extra lag. Uh, it, it, uh, it's, uh, it, it's not happy bunny at the minute uh, for letting us fly around. But you'll hear their items are coming up. Yep, they get pushed into there, and there you go. They're slowly getting pushed in there, and I'll tell you what, we'll stick these last two stacks in here as well. And you can see that they're, they're, they're going to be flowing as fast as they can. But you'll see here, there is a gap between everything that's coming in, which is a nice steady pace. And if we come down here, you see this line here is just charged on its own. It's flashing on its own to allow things back and forth. And with this slower regulator, we have saved our storage system from continuously crashing. Because uh, if we go back down to the bottom here, the, the overspill, uh, every time I was at the base, no matter what I was doing, I was continuously having to put uh, items back into storage that were lying down here, especially with the wool farm, because the wool farm was continuously on. And I was continuously having to come down here and gather up loose bits of wool that didn't make it. And since I changed that regulator a month ago, the, the only items that have landed down there have been uh, food items which don't have a storage space and some of the uh, things that I chucked in that uh, don't have a slot. Um, and two bits of wool. And those two bits of wool came at the exact same time, so I'm just gonna put that down to a little, maybe it's a, a lag spike, or maybe it's when I was coming back and forth between the never, maybe it's a cause a glitch. But in a month, just to have that tiny error, and I've also had no uh, filter blocks dropping. So it was a case of uh, those two wool blocks just skipped over their, um, their the slots where they were supposed to drop down which uh, I think is a uh, brilliant reliability, uh, considering what uh, as I said, what it was like before. Um, actually, if we just go back down here as well, you'll be able to see the input light there to tell us that that's what's going into the system is now flashing just at a nice steady pace, so you can see that it's all coming in there. So, uh, as I said, that was uh, well, a, a nice little look there at the uh, various different types of redstone clocks. Uh, the ones I personally recommend are, uh, as you can see back here, observer clocks for things like uh, fast moving ones. Uh, although that we're not getting a particularly fast uh, signal off here for the sound, uh, as we're supposed to for the, uh, the pulsing of everything coming into storage. Uh, and we also have the uh, observer clocks, uh, so the hopper clocks even here. Um, and this regulator here is, um so this, is, so this is what I recommend for getting things into your base, uh, into your auto sorter, definitely use uh, use that method. Uh, let's see, it's starting to come up dark outside. Uh, you see here we have other inputs as well, of course that goes into there. So let's uh, hop back over to the redstone testing warehouse trying to fly out of here but uh, the recording software is producing a fair bit of lag. There we go. So let's hop back out of here and head over here. Have a little something to eat as we come to land. So as I said the ones outside here not reliable. Uh, basically you have to be doing something manually to make sure these ones work. Um, and on the inside if we hop around here we have here the, uh, the traditional EFO clock uh, I might try and make a silent version of that. There must be a way I could uh, I could trigger something. Maybe it's using uh, redstone torches. We might be able to cope with some kind of silent version of this. Uh, but we'll do that in another episode. And then here, of course, as well, we have our the recommended ones, as I said. Uh, and also as well, with, with these ones as well, uh, and with the hoppers as well, you can move the hoppers to turn your clocks on and off depending on your scenario. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, don't forget to rate, comment, favourite and subscribe. And uh, hopefully we'll be back, fingers crossed, to a more regular schedule after massive technical disasters over the last month. So uh, there we go. I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you all next time.